Over the years, I have gathered a lot of PC cases. And what do you do when you have a surplus of them? That's right, you make a PC test bench. Most of the cases are assembled with rivets, so I will drill them to get to the bottom tray of the case that holds the motherboard. I took four cases, two older and two slightly newer, to choose which one I like more. In the end, I choose a trace from the older cases. I have to modify them a bit, but they are definitely better. I will use a shoe cabinet as the base to which I will attach everything. Yes, you heard it right, more precisely a door from a shoe cabinet. I like the angle at which it is, it is easy to disassemble, it is not too heavy, it is solid, the colors are the colors of this YouTube channel, it's free, it's made from cheap board so it's easy to modify, it has a cable openings and it will not be thrown away, I'll recycle it. To see if everything fits, I first put on motherboard, as they say in show business, dry fit everything first. I was thinking of putting two motherboards to be a dual test bench, but since I have more doors and a couple of PC cases, I decided to make them smaller and to have two test benches but separate. I will store them more easily and I can put them on top of each other so they will not take up much space. The metal base for the motherboard is twisted and flimsy so I will have to attach it to chipboard but it's also too big. It's wider because the power supply from the computer was connected to it. And since the power supply will be under the board I have a little access that I cut down slowly and finally clean from sharp edges. Another good thing about older cases is they have holes on them for older and newer motherboards so brass spacers can be easily screwed on. After I modified the metal tray in terms of size and I have dimensions for the next part it was time for modification of the shoe cabinet door. It was simple, measure twice, mark and cut once. And since it is easy to disassemble, I transferred the measurements to all the parts. I sewed very slowly to make the cut as straight as possible. And in the end, when I test fit everything, everything looked okay. I have five doors, but in the end I didn't need them. I didn't cut anything wrong, so I left one for parts. If anything breaks, I can easily replace it. You have to love chipboard. It's a such a cheap material. It can often uh, be found for free and it is easy to reuse for some projects. Next, I did drill the holes for side uh, that is cut and I put everything back. It is the same as before only shorter. As the power supply is a bit heavier and I would not want it to move when I move the test bench, I also cut the metal part that holds the power supply. Installation will be easy because there are already drill holes in the right places and I will use the old case a little bit more. I really like that there is a hole on the side through which I can easily run cables to all components. Uh, the next thing I took from the old PC case is hard drive cage because I wouldn't like them to fall out or to move um, and a small cage for two HDDs is fine. I have it and why not put it. Everything is easy to modify and mount with wood screws. I try to mount everything to be straight at the right angles because it's hip to be square. 
I use the Corsair power supply because I already have it and I bought it few years back for the following reasons. It's a known brand, has a long cables, 5 year warranty, it's not expensive, it has a cable sleeves and also a lot of SATA and MOLEC connectors, 2 and 4 pin connectors for CPU, 6 and 8 pin for graphic card. So I'm okay in almost all cases where I use older but also newer motherboard and components. It's not a power supply for newer graphic cards but I don't have a problem with that because they are out of my budget anyway. To attach the tray to the frame I have to drill a couple of holes. The screws will not protrude at all because I'll put them in the parts that are recessed and the motherboard is on the brackets so there should be no problem. Everything is in place and firm so in the end I'm just checking clearance just in case and whether anything else needs to be modified. To allow for easy board replacement I want to try thumb screws. Not a bad idea, but on some boards I have very little space, so I have to use a screw screwdriver. In short, I also want to show how easy it is to run cables. There are openings on all sides and they come in handy for some cable management. I was thinking of making a graphic card holder, but due to the angle it is it at and I only use them for a short time I see no reason to put them on if it turns out I need them I'll put a longer screw like some other test benches have in short they proved to be very useful and it's good that I have two of them one I use to test older motherboards old ETA hard drives basically for older components while the other one I keep always assembled and I use it to test components as you can see here I'm testing RX 470 graphics card that I bought from a miner and I was thinking of mounting a switch on the frame but basically the cables would be in the way so for now I won't touch anything except I plan to maybe drill a hole through the front so I have extra cable outlet if it proves necessary.